All right. So good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, September 6, uh, 2022 at 10 a.m. I'm going to call this regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. The first thing on our agenda is some interviews for the Town Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, is Nancy She's here. Nancy here? She's yeah. in the background. Oh, perfect. Do you want to uh, come on up? Good morning. Uh, do you want to just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the Historic Preservation Commission? Well, um, thank you. Yeah. I'm not used to these. Uh, I have been on the design review board for some years, and I found that that was a very different thing than what this historic preservation is, that the design review is really all about change. You know, nothing comes up before it except um, something that wants to be changed. Um, my familiarity with my in my professional life has always been documenting the past and okay. history. Um, though I have no real experience in American architecture, archaeology. Mm -hmm. I do have experience in archaeology, and I think that the methods for documenting things are the same. It really doesn't matter whether you, you know, what century you're working with. Um, and I've always been interested in architecture, but I think that this I, this is a more familiar ground for me uh, than the design review, and I can think of all sorts of reasons for, you know, sort of for having this, um, what do you call it, uh, CLG, yeah. right, the, to move forward. I think it's a terrific idea. And I think a lot of it is what's being done already by the History Center. Mm -hmm. But this um, would bring more state money in. Okay. Way. And uh, I can see all sorts of ways of sort of promoting the historic architecture of the town within the town. Great. And you have the um, time in your schedule to make for the meetings and I however do. they're scheduled? I do. Great. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Does uh, Carrie or either of you two have any questions? No, nope, you asked my standard question. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, uh, Charlie? Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Joe. Charlie. So if you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in uh, the Sure, I'm, I'm Charlie Dagener. I'm presently the town clerk in Woodstock. I also service the president of the Woodstock History Center. Um, but more relevant, uh, I guess, to this application, I have a master's degree from UVM in historic preservation. And I previously worked for the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation in Montpelier, um, administering a couple grant programs they had um, and also doing um, review for the division um, for a few months while um, that person was on leave. All right. So, Susan, I'll let you ask your... My standard question. <laughs> <You can> ask... <laughs> Do you have any issue attending meetings, whether they're day or night? Um, depending on the night, I may have a conflict. Days, um, I usually have coverage in the office and I'm fairly flexible. Uh, but as I said, depending on when the meeting is scheduled for, I should be able to make it. And day or night, I should be able to make work. Great. Uh, thank you. OK. Thanks. And that leaves uh, Sarah Glasser-Tucker. She's on Zoom. All right. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Would you like to just tell us a little about, about yourself and your interest in the commission? Certainly, yes. Um, so I am an interior designer and interested very much in architecture and historic preservation. Um, I moved to Woodstock two and a half years ago, and the historic nature of the town was one of the main attractions for me. And um, I'm just interested in actually doing some work to actually to maintain that and to help the cause in any way. Um, I do not have a background in historic preservation per se, but I do have an interest and 
a passion in it. And um, I'm really interested in learning more about it. And so just kind of coming in with an openness and a willingness to work toward helping the town preserve its character. Thank you. My standard question is whether you have any um, problems with meetings, whether they be day or night. Not in general. I mean, as long as I have a little bit of, you know, advance warning to make sure I can, you know, I have two kids, so make sure my husband can stay home with the kids or, you know, a day or two to take off work. Um, I can certainly arrange for any time. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so that takes care of those and brings us to citizen comments. Is there anyone in the audience here on Zoom? Uh, John Spector. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, I um, think that I made it, well, not I think, I know that I made a mistake um, and did not get to Nikki some material that the EDC wanted the select board to consider. Um, I sent I sent the material um, late in the day on Friday, possibly after you guys were closed. Um, it, the, the issue is to approve the, an extension of funding for the marketing program. It's a forty-five thousand dollar funding, and as I am bringing it up now in the citizen comments, even though I sent it and asked if it could be added to the agenda, I feel like it's a significant item, and unless everyone on the select board has received the material that I sent by some miracle. Um, I would actually just simply request that we add it to the agenda for the next select board meeting and we'll deal with the consequences of the delay. There may not be any consequences, I hope not. Yeah, um, I don't think we received it, uh, Nikki has it now so she can distribute it, is that correct? Yeah, so we'll uh, distribute it and put it on the agenda for the next meeting on the 20th or whatever it is. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry about that. And sorry, Nikki, I, the, the reason for it, I could make up a reason, but the reason is I completely forgot. So thank you, and I'll see you at the next meeting. So. All right. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, I have a comment. Hey, Roger. Hi, how are you? Good. So I have a significant concern about the way this municipal manager search has been communicated to the public. I'm sure unintentionally, there has been to, to my, in my opinion, a lack of transparency and a failure to keep the public informed regarding the, 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 regarding the process that's been decided upon. There's no meaningful information in the public record on the town website about how decisions were made or even that decisions were made. Nothing in the posted agenda or minutes of meetings about decisions taken by the combined boards regarding how to conduct this process is reflected in the minutes of the meeting. Decisions to go into executive session were not properly documented in the minutes. When you go into executive session, you're supposed to explicitly state why you're going into executive session and what the justification is. There's no public record of the decision to hire the executive search consultant. The meetings for the July 29th joint meeting between the select board and the trustees are missing from the website. In the case of critical concerns like hiring a municipal manager, and in every case, the public has a right to expect that public records of meetings posted on the website are accurate and complete records of the conduct of government business and of decisions made by the board. As of now, that is demonstrably not the case and in more cases than this one. This process is something that the people of the of the town and village of Woodstock should have had significant input on how this process is going to work. This is somebody who's going to have a huge impact on the operations of the town and on our taxes. And the way that this decisions have been made about this and this decisions have been communicated about this have been completely inadequate. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll take that under advisement. I'm just making some notes. Um, 
Anyone else have any, any other comments? All right. Uh, brings us to additions to and deletions from posted agenda. Does anyone have any? Okay. Uh, I just have a question. Okay. We received the um, agreement from David Green. Is that, where is that being? I think we want to talk about that on the 20th because he, okay. I was just talking to Tom and I guess he's in vacation, so he's not even okay. here to. Great, thank you. Put that away. Um, <clears throat> so Tom, manager's report. Uh, the first item on the manager's report is the uh, schedule of the uh, budget process. Um, I'm not so sure I even shared this with the uh, select board previously. Um, and it's just as well because as we've been going forward, we've been making changes to it. And I don't think we're going to see changes at this point. Um, as far as I know, the uh, finance uh, committee has agreed to this. And, um, and this will be the process that we'll be using. Um, and when the um, Boards, uh, I'm sorry, when the um, Finance Committee is meeting with the department heads, which is going to start uh, on the 15th of September, pretty much go uh, on a weekly basis. There's a couple, uh, I think October 13th and 18th, uh, there's two meetings uh, during that week. Um, those are open to the public because uh, we're not sure how many Finance Committee members are going to be there, so they could show up in a Forum or not. Uh, so, um, and of course, the select board is uh, welcome to those meetings as well. Um, if three of you, well, let me know if you're going to attend because, in the same situation, if three of you happen to show up at that meeting, we need to, uh, to warn it. Would it just be easier to warn them all? We could. That way, they, that way, they have nothing slips through the cracks. Yeah. Um, is this just, they, a, just with I, the department I, heads? But I, I'm really I'm kind of reluctant to do that, to warn it as a select board meeting. No, but warn it as a finance committee Oh, we're meeting. definitely going to do that. Okay, so. I, I meant select board. Are, are these for with the department heads? Yes. yes. I think at that stage I would sit out and let them work uh, and bring, bring us something. But I wouldn't want to stop one of the other board members from going yep. if they wanted. Okay, so chances are, from what we're saying, that that's a quorum is not going to show up. The select board quorum is not going to show up at those meetings. It doesn't sound like it at this time. Yep. Well, but if anybody decides they want to come. Yep. I was at the last one, so I may. Yeah, okay. <coughs> yeah, I may too. Okay. Well, somebody beyond you too wants to show up, uh, please let me know because we should post it. Otherwise, Three people probably right. shouldn't sit throughout the meeting. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details. The board has that information, um, and um, it will be in the minutes. Um, and we could post this on the website also. I think that'd be good. Yep. Um, Tax bills were mailed out on September 1. You may have already received those, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, the uh, staff did a great job of getting them printed and prepared and gone uh, well in advance of uh, the statutory requirement date. Um, we are going to begin interviews uh, tomorrow for uh, Public Works Director, I should say, interview. We did have two candidates. One's already backed out. Um, I put together a committee of uh, the uh, chair of the select board and the chair of the trustees, as well as uh, the former Public Works Director is going to participate in the interviews. Um, even if we have a really great candidate tomorrow, I and, and the people on the committee may uh, feel differently, but I think that we're going to re-advertise a little bit because uh, the, the, the um, I don't know, the response was not overwhelming. 
and I think to do our due diligence, we need to do that. In the interim, um, we have a plan um, of myself and different members of the Public Works Department that will be covering um, the Public Works Directors in his absence. Um, and I think that it's going to be time consuming um, for me, unfortunately. A lot of what he had to do was uh, site visits. I hope to avoid that, uh, but I, I don't think I can in all cases because we need somebody out there that uh, um, has uh, the authority to deal with uh, situations in, in cases, in many cases. Item four in the report is the uh, Tassville Covered Bridge. Not a big item, but I thought I would just report it was damaged, it's already been repaired, nothing structural, and uh, an insurance claim uh, was filed uh, against the RV owners, uh, insurance that, that hit it. Um, and beginning today, uh, the manager's depart office will be closed uh, between noon and one, and that will be uh, the case from now on out. I, isn't that something that should go be before the two boards? I don't think so. Um, I think it's. Well, uh, I, well, I respectfully disagree. Okay. Well, we can disagree because I think that's uh, totally under the uh, manager's purview to uh, have his uh, personnel work when he feels appropriately or she feels appropriately, um, and uh, and uh, have the office open um, during um, whatever hours are appropriate. We recently studied that uh, the amount of uh, uh, visits, uh, even on any time, is very, very minuscule um, to that office. And uh, even, and I'm, t I'm talking like six to eight people a week, and uh, even less so during that one hour, noon to uh, to 1 p.m. Um, We've uh, put a box outside the office for people that may want to drop in documents or tax payments, um, which um, we will check after uh, the office is opened uh, again at 1 p.m. That's all I have. Oh, yes. And so we put together a, a financial report. I think she handed it out. You know, that's I've it's, got to everybody. It's really not okay to be getting that right as the meeting starts. I mean, it, we can't have a meaningful discussion. We I need agree. it in advance. All right. Well, let's. Uh, so I would laugh, like this to be updated and resubmitted um, for our next meeting. Okay. And I, I do have one question, though, as I quickly looked over it. Um, I, I thought we discussed not having Sarah Macy renew her contract for this fiscal year because we don't have the funds. Oh, I, I, that's a new one on me. I did not know that. It's, I don't think it's in the budget. I, I agree it's not. So how can we spend money we don't have in a budget? Well, we just have to overspend one item. I thought we discussed that Sarah Macy was really critical to helping us move forward in a productive way. I think we discussed it in, in conjunction with the budget um, committee, but not ongoing assistance to um, the office. And we just, we can't keep bleeding that money. Can I say something? Who is that? Oh, Zoe. Um, yeah, please. Thank you. Thank so you. there was an agreement entered on April 1st of 2022 um, between the town and Sarah um, that was signed off on, and I believe, actually I have it here, it's signed off between Ted Bradley, uh, um, Brady, excuse me, from the VLCT and Bill Kerbin, um, and Bill signed that on April 4th. And when does that extend to, or like, what's the end date on that? Sure. Um, it expires December 31st, 2022. 12, 31, 22. Yep. So there's no future agreement after that. Um, we just need to pay for July 1st at 1231 out of FY 23. That's Correct. already budgeted. Yep. Yeah. And so um, it looks like you're probably closer to 
ten thousand dollars versus the fourteen. Fourteen one fifty was the total. And some of that's from FY twenty two. No, fourteen. Yeah, I'm sorry, fourteen one fifty. About thirty two hundred was FY twenty two. Two. Okay. Because I would request that it be brought um, before the boards before that any contract like that is extended. Yes. Yeah. If there's any interest in extending this or any need to extend it. Um, Board review, I think, would be is requested. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, that take care of manager report. So, for old business um, acceptance of new road and land transfer from Loop Road, which is uh, right there, South Woodstock. If you want, uh, come on up. <clears throat> you move the papers around, whatever gives you the space. And if you just uh, introduce yourself for the. Yep. Oh, this is Greg McKenna with Murray Masterson. Can I get your names real quick? Yeah, I'm Joe Swanson. Joe. Ray Bourgeois. Susan Ford. And then on the Zoom is Carrie Cole, bottom right. Okay. She's on the sideboard. All right. Is that Mark Hi, Tyler. Tyler. <clears throat> yep. Tyler Reynolds is here too. Hi, Tyler. All right, so you want to start us off? Yeah, so I think it was uh, February 2020. We got approval from the select board to relocate Loop Road. It's um, so like a 1,500 linear foot section. The work has been completed now, and we're basically at the stage where we want to do a land swap with the town and uh, Fern Brook LLC. We have it drafted up with a surveyor, Bob Farnsworth and attorney Peter Ballers is involved as well. Um, you say Bob Farnsworth? Bob Farnsworth, yep. And these are his plans you're looking at. Okay. Um, and then Peter Ballers is the attorney involved. And basically coming to the select board to see if there's any additional information needed from you guys um, or that you need from us in order to make this happen. Has anyone from the town? Uh, yeah, Elijah, um, and, and I haven't met with him personally, but he was there with the contractor and um, they had talked about a few changes that were implemented during the construction and I, I guess I've been told that he is uh, perhaps no longer working at the town. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. but uh, Elijah and I were out there Friday and looked over this. And it, he had during the construction process, two minor changes were made on either end where the approach yes. on the, um, boy, I think that's, I'm a little confused on the directions here. Probably but, the north and south ends where they tie into the, well, yeah, the existing I, road. Well, yeah, I think it was the, um, I think it was the south road, or south approach. Uh, the, the radius of the curve was uh, reduced a little bit and an embankment was, um, excavated so that the line of sight was improved and on the uh, northern end um, I'm sorry the southern end um, a bank was uh, cut back in order to improve the sight distance yep. because of the curves yep um, but other than and those things are done and uh, uh, Elijah and I both agree that uh, the, the thing is built as to this plan and um, and to accept the road is certainly acceptable at this point. Okay. Um, so you'll have legal documents at some point from the attorney for us to. Like, yes. I don't know, is it being done as a boundary adjustment or? A, or uh, we we have them uh, ready. It's just it's just a right it's just a right of way uh, relocation just between the two parcels. So whoever should I send that to um, Nicole? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Thank you. And just for my clarification, we're yep. looking at the map. So, this is obviously what always was the road. Yep. Here's the house. Yep. And then where, which is the, which set of lines is the new road? Up here. That blue one. Blue. Oh, the blue. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's what I thought I was looking at. Yep. Um, I was trying to visualize. So I appreciate yep. that. Yep. Um, that was the only question I had. Here, no other questions. Nope. All right. So. Um, we, can't do we want to see the documents first, yeah. and then um, vote on it. 
I think we probably meeting? have to vote to authorize someone to sign them, so we yeah. can't do that. Without, Without looking documents. at the documents? Right. So if you can okay. get us the documents, we'll keep this on the agenda for the 20th. Okay. Um, we've got enough on the agenda for the 20th to keep us here until 10 o'clock <laughs> already, so let's I mean, that's push something free. out. Yeah, but quick. Okay. All right. <laughs> It won't take long. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think it'll take long. We'll. Um, you if you can get us those documents. Along. Yep. And um, if we have any questions, we'll get back to you. But okay. We'll come up with a motion, and um, that sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Are already sent to Nicole. <laughs> All right. Great. And we got truck bids. First one being for highway department, three quarter ton, four wheel drive. That's Claremont Ford, was it? Yeah, they're both Ford and Claremont. Yes. Yeah, yeah, both vehicles are Ford and Claremont. Yeah. No, nobody else bid on it. We never, nobody we didn't request bid anyone to bid on it. No other manufacturers, no other um, garages bid on it. Um, I, I. Friday reached out to this fellow to see if he could give us a little more information about Ford does offer a municipal or and or fleet pricing and uh, I wanted to know whether that is what we're looking at here or not um, and uh, it's hard to um, compare this bid to a, uh, a standard truck because it's not this is right. strictly a cab and chassis um, so so are they, they're selling us the truck and the and the Iroquois body right right Except like yep yep yeah it will but be. the 47 is the bid for just the truck and the chassis right yes. yep yeah so why is One body, seven thousand dollars more than the other. And do we need a super cab? I guess would be my other question. That's a four-person vehicle. Yep. Um, you talking about B, the first one or the second one? One's a two fifty and one's a three thirty. I have no idea what that means. Uh, yeah. Three fifty. It's the payload and the tow capacity. Yeah. Is increased. So you know, one ton is cheaper than the three quarter, even though it's a. Do we, I guess my question is why do we need a crew cab? I think they find it really uh, much more efficient to, when they're doing jobs that require more people, uh, as a, you know, like four people, three people, as opposed to uh, driving two trucks. I have seen them doing that at storm sites and different projects so yeah. I've also seen three or four trucks there too so yeah I guess it goes works both ways but yeah. it doesn't um, doesn't seem unnecessary to me because I have seen it done I suppose that's what I'm saying I mean if this is what we got <laughs> well you're gonna look into the municipal yeah, to make sure that we're getting a, okay. a discount. For, this, if, if, for the state you could bid? Make, you could, for both of them. Yeah. Um, First, if this. you want to make a motion contingent upon that, you could. Contingent but not exceeding the state state bid? Well, for yeah, I don't, I'm not so sure it's a state bid. I think it's a Ford uh, fleet oh, okay. discount. Because a state bid is probably not that specific. Yeah, it's probably not. No. I don't know that they get a lot of trucks of this sort. Yeah. The state, very few. No, but if they have some kind of deal with Ford that they get. Yeah, they probably do. I, I don't know for a fact because their trucks could be quite different. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I wouldn't really call it a state bid. I'd call it the Ford fleet pricing. Fleet pricing? Yeah. Municipal. Okay. Yeah. Carrie, did you have a question? I thought I saw a hand up. Nope. Um, so then, contingent on the uh, what the the three quarter ton super cab, 
this bid not exceeding the Ford fleet pricing, um, I would be in favor of this accepting this. Is there a motion for? Can I get a motion for that or something similar? I'll move we accept that. Okay. With the contingency. With the contingency yeah. that we check what state pricing, right. what state pricing may impact it. So motion by Susan to accept the um, three quarter super three quarter ton super cab um, contingent on not exceeding the Ford fleet or state bid type pricing. Uh, second. I'll second. I'll second. Thank I'll you. Second. second by Kerry. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, four with one absent, that motion. And then next vehicle being the one ton cab with chassis, um, and also from Ford of Claremont. I'll move we accept the bid subject to um, state pricing. Okay, motion by S Susan, contingent that this is, does not exceed the Ford fleet or state pricing. Second. 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 Right. Second by Ray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four in favor with one absent. And that brings us to gravel bids. Can I just ask on a second page of the uh, one ton, there's something about plows. So is this above, or are the trucks coming with a plow? It says body and plow. Yes, it does come with a plow. Okay. Yep. All right, so gravel bids. Pike, Casella, and Twin State. Was there a recommendation from Elijah on these? Uh, yes. And I can present that to you. Um, it's pretty straightforward, as you can see on the gravel bids. Um, uh, Pike is a uh, low bidder on all those, right? And um, and obviously that's his and mine recommendation to accept the gravel bids uh, for all four different types of gravel. Uh, from Pike. Um, there is a representative from Pike here this, this morning. Um, Hi, sir. If there's any questions. Is there any questions? I, I don't have any questions. I don't either. No. I think we should act on the recommendation of the manager and superintendent. I'll make a motion to accept the <coughs> gravel bid from Pike. Second. Okay. Motion by Ray, second by Susan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries with four with one absent. Four in favor, one absent. And sand bids. Sand bids are a little more complicated. Um, I don't know exactly why they bid the way that they were. Uh, because as you can see, uh, Twin State is really the only vendor that uh, has provided a bid for all three items. And what's not obvious when you look at the spreadsheet is that they they actually combine all three items uh, for our winter sand. This is for winter sand, uh, primarily used when uh, there's ice storms. Um, so really there's no other option than to go with Twin State, which is really the current um, vendor anyways for our sand because the other the other vendors are not bidding um, for all three components of the winter sand. Um, ironically, um, I think Twin State gets their um, sand out of the uh, D and D pit, um, which is their which is a local pit. They have an arrangement with them and then and, and then they mix uh, there are other components in, in to uh, to create a, a final product that has all three components. Since does we have, make, does that make any sense? Yeah. I'm just wondering, since we have someone from Pike here, if we can 
ask why they didn't give a bid for dry screened sand. I wasn't aware that you had a bid on all three. So in the past, there, there are three totally different products. Dry screen sand is a natural, like a bank on product that's screen. So it's like the brown sand that you see. Um, the other two items you asked for pricing on, the manufactured sand is actually um, created through crushing ledge, and then we wash it so it's, it's not dusty at all, it's a wash small product, that's a manufactured sand. And then three eighths ledge is a separate product that a lot of the towns, including you guys, usually blend with your natural sand. You give it bite, it's a fractured face product. Whereas a natural sand or a dry screen sand is not a fractured face, it's a, a little particle that are all around. So the reason I didn't bid on the dry screen sand is because um, our pricing to haul that from Heartland, it's worth more to Pike Industries to use it for hot mix than to sell it for winter standards. Because the, the supply is as it is. Mm -hmm. um, they're not making sand pits anymore, unfortunately. So um, I just assume that <clears throat> you can bid on three individual products. I know, um, I don't know what you guys did last year for rewarding if you did all three in one company here. Put it up. You did. Yeah. Okay. So maybe just shame on me for not asking, but maybe going forward you could put something in the notice that says this will only be considered all three products that bid on. It kind of it kind of seemed like it was three. But you wouldn't have been able to. You wouldn't have bid on the dry screen sand. Well, I, I probably I probably would have because then you'd have to look at a breakdown. Mm -hmm. You know, as a town, how much of each of these products did we use, and um, what's the distribution and volume of each one? And you know, Pike, if we used three quarters of our budget was for the three H ledge, and Pike was six bucks a ton cheap, you know, lower than the dry screen sand, where they're four bucks a ton higher, then you'd have to figure out where, what your total budget would allow according to what your usage would be. The product. That makes any sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So. So usually what a lot of towns will do, like Pomfret, for instance, they don't buy dry screen sand from us, but they buy the three eighths lunch from us. So we were pretty competitive on that price. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what your volumes are for each other. Yeah, how, I, how it sugars out for I think, total. Budget. I think it's I think it's large enough that um, Woodstock has their vendors do the mixing and we get final product of all three, you know, all three combined. Sons of Pomper must mix their own. Yeah, if you know, it's separate you guys did that also. Yeah, we mix up. I, I've seen different piles with different materials. Oh, so, well, they keep a little of everything. Yeah, there. but I think Elijah said they mix it. I thought he did, but. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think the bulk of it. It's the, they they yeah. might customize it here and there and use it for different applications, but I think the bulk of the winter sand comes as, as all three combined. That's that's my understanding. Pre-combined. Well, I have I have two questions anyway. One going back to the previous bid before I realized it. Are these delivered pricing or are these? We were asked to bid in um, both delivered and picked up. So the FOB price is you your truck or are you hiring somebody to pick up our for you? Right. Yeah. And then the delivered price is delivered to your. Right, but we don't have a delivered. Oh, the. Uh, okay. You're talking on the gravel bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went. Well, no, I, see. I, I. But I didn't see that on the sand bit. That's why I brought oh. it up. Yeah. yeah, the sand bit was just you guys just asked for a delivered price for okay. sand, uh, manufactured sand, and we we. And I was, I was told by, and I, again, I don't know how you do it, I'm just given this territory up to the north of the team. So I was told by, I know, we have to kind of coordinate with the road foreman as to when he's 
getting his natural sand in, so we can also bring in the creates to blend it. But if you guys are to get them, again, I'm not aware of what the process is. Because we're quite a bit less on the creates one. Delivery. So I think, Tom, some questions are whether we mix, how much we mix, and then, I mean, the price difference with 3.8 crushed stone, you know, I think it would be helpful as, as I'm sorry, I'm bad at names, but representative yeah. from Pike, thank you, said is to find out what percentages, you know, what we use of these materials. Yeah. Because if, if the bulk of our use is the crushed stone, which it probably isn't, but if yeah. it was, then... It's a very minor part. Okay, well... Yeah, again, every, every pound like, has a different bucket blend ratio. It's usually a two to one. Um, two buckets of natural sand and one bucket of lead. So, uh, you want to uh, bring this up at the next meeting, or how do you want to do this? I don't, I, I don't know I don't, that much about it, so I'm. I'm I know just we've always it done it like as, a, as a single um, vendor. Vendor, yeah. Elijah said he mixes. <laughs> he's, he's, he's watching. Yeah. Well, I asked him. Oh, you did. Okay. Um. So then, that was my misunderstanding. Does that mean we can do a split? I think you'd have to find out if, like, Twin State sticks to those prices. If we don't, we, if we right, exactly. We yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll. We'll take any piece of the pie, though. Okay. That we're not going to spend any parts. You know, we just want to create slides. I mean, that's what yeah. makes sense financially. So I don't know how you. There's a reason for doing this because I asked the same question and I don't understand the reason. So. So how would you do it, for instance, if I had put the same price in and we were, our ratio was the offset of what, like Twin States three eighths lens. Our ratio was, you just, yeah. then it's just who do we want to get? Uh, no, I think we'd have to do the analysis that uh, Susan stock it. And yeah. yeah, figure out what the real bottom line is bottom based line. upon the ratio. Yeah. That's not that right. <laughs> uh, and I mean, screen, I mean, D and D is the lowest dried yeah. dry screen sand anyway. Yeah, sure are. So shall we? I hate I to say table. Do we have time yeah, to table should. it? To it's not snowing. It's okay. It's not snowing yeah. yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not snowing yet. <laughs> no, no, no. We have time. Get um, this clarified. Okay. Yeah. Good questions. Thank you for coming. It helps. Oh, the explanations yeah. were helpful. That was very that was very helpful. helpful. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Is there any other business? I've got nothing. No, I have, nothing. I have to scoot in a few in a minute or two. Yeah. Could we go ahead and quickly go into executive session to discuss yeah. the candidates? All right. So that's going to be. Um, it, can I just? Yeah. I was not here for the July nineteenth me meeting, which we've had to postpone that vote already because we didn't have quorum. So could we vote just on the July nineteenth minutes before Carrie leaves? I would, move I would move to approve those minutes. I'll second it. Yep. Motion by Kerry, second by Ray to approve the July 19th minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention. Three in favor, one abstention, one absent. That Thank motion you. carries. And so Title I, Section 313. Let me look up the sub. While you look, I'll move that we move to executive session to um, discuss appointments. Which is going to be uh, section. So for the record, it's going to be section 313 sub um, three. Is anybody, is anybody on? Aye. 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 All right.
right, we're back. And <clears throat> would uh, I would move I that would... we appoint Charlie Degener and Nancy's. Uh, I'm going to. Savenko. Savenko and Sarah Glasser Tucker to the Historic Preservation Commission for the town. I'll second it. Motion by Kerry, second by Ray to appoint the three applicants to the Historic Preservation Commission for the town. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries with four and one absent. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to scoot early. Right. Thank you very much. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Which leaves the minutes for July 29th. August 9th and August 16th. I make a motion to approve those minutes. I'd like to amend the August 9th minutes to reflect that when the select board came out of executive session, they agreed to hire Dominic Cloud as our consultant in the town manager. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, that's August 9th. It was the joint. Yeah, I just, I was looking at the wrong. Actually, it's in the 20th. I have the 19th, and then oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah, when we hired him on page two. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so should we reflect on August 9th that we took no action requiring a vote. I mean, I think the complaint from a citizen is yeah. that we come out of his executive session and there's no record of what happened. Yeah, I mean, the, it is in the minutes for the 20th. No, you're right. I, right. But I, what I, I the, only, the other point that he had that, and I don't know what the rule on minutes is, but we have to state the reason to go into executive session. Right. And I don't know if that needs to be reflected in the minutes also. It should, it should be. Yeah, I can put it uh, there. So, so we just need to amend the August 9th minutes to reflect why we went into executive session and if we took any action when we came out. Did we, when we did go yeah. into executive session on the 9th. We were in for almost an hour. Yes, okay. But we'd already, we at already that point, we'd already done. done. But it doesn't say why we're into executive session. Right. Was that when we set the, that was a joint, so that wasn't when we set the. It is a joint meeting. It was a joint meeting, but it wasn't the joint. But there was, it was, had to do with talking to Dominic about what what we were interested in, what we were looking for and okay so we need to reflect that no um, we went into the executive session to discuss the town manager search well it says that in yeah. B right right so if we just say we went to executive session for that reason and no action was taken. Right. So I guess to summarize, I would say C could add no action was taken on discussion referenced B1. Yeah, that I just say we went into exec executive session to uh, discuss what we were looking for in a town manager. Copy and paste? Yeah. And okay. Just say no action was taken when we. And then for the 29th, we just need to amend to add. No, we're fine. I'm we're fine on the 29th? Yeah. Yes, it's okay. fine. For the 9th, do we need to add the title and section that we went into executive session for? I'm inclined to think that if we have to say it in the meeting, it might need to be they might need to be in the minutes, so it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to add it. So okay. if we can add those two things there. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's going to be the it's going to be the same thing, sub three. Um, I can write it out for you. Yeah, but I'm good with everything else. And so then, then I'll amend that to accept everything but the ninth until we get those. Okay. Sure. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, which leaves us with adjournment. <laughs> Just, right, anything else? Yeah, I wasn't here for the meeting, the last meeting with Dominic, and I'm, has it been announced who the committees are and what the process is? Just again, to have some transparency for the town manager search? No, because this is our first meeting since then. Okay, I just think for trans, okay. you know, yeah, so we, are, we have a complaint from a citizen. Yeah, so for the public record, um, representing the town select board on the search committee is going to be Ray Bourgeois and Susan Ford, um, assisted by um, Tom Devavoy, member of the public. Um, the village. Who's a, the village um, is represented by Seaton McRoy. Um, Gabe DeLeon. Gabe DeLeon and citizen um, Laura Powers. Powell. Powell, thank you. So, if nothing else, I'm ready to adjourn. So moved. Tom? I'll second it. Good. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.